Chai, my people, wonder shall never end. Like there is fire on the mountain. Like I was heartbroken as well as pained when I watched this particular video that I want to show you guys. This is a soldier from the north. He reviewed many things that is going on in Nigeria military. When you come to insecurity in Nigeria, it's not going to end any soon. Like it's not going to end. Like it's going to continue forever. Because those people that are supposed to fight Boko Haram bandits, they are the one behind it. My people, we are really, really in big trouble in this country called Nigeria. This video is really eye-opener. Yes, I know that we have idea that insecurity in Nigeria is man-made. But we never thought that it is this deep, my people. Like we are really, really in trouble in this country called Nigeria. Let me allow you guys to listen to this soldier so that you will have idea like what is going on in Nigeria when it comes to insecurity. How many of you remember Chibok girls? This guy was one of the soldiers that was sent to rescue Chibo girls when they were kidnapped by Boko Haram. And what this guy is about to review is going to blow your mind. This is his experience. Bro, I can't believe you're one of the soldiers that was sent to rescue Chibo girls. I am. The security situation of Nigeria, do you think it's going to get better anytime soon? Honestly speaking, I don't think it's going to get better anytime soon. Why do you say so? Because it's deeper than what we think. It's deeper than what people see. Because there are a lot of players behind the insecurity going on currently in Nigeria. People that are supposed to fight the insecurity, they are behind it. Can you tell us some of the things you experience that is making you speak this way? I'll give an example. In Zamfara, we had an intel about a particular guy that manufactures AK-47. So we, had, we, we got the order to go arrest this person. When we got to the community, we saw this man with more than 50 AK-47. Wow. He has lived almost all of his life in Russia. He knows how to manufacture weapon. So we arrested this guy and... 15 to 20 minutes later, we got a call from someone at the top and we, we were ordered to release him at that spot. And not just to release him, to escort him back. So we had to let him go instantly. Wow. That is just one of the things we, we face because as soldiers, we, we obey orders, we don't question orders. So if we're ordered to do something, we do it. If we're ordered to release somebody, we just follow the orders. I can't believe this. What are some of the other things you've experienced that has made you conclude that, that it would be difficult for insecurity to stop in Nigeria? You know, I've worked with um, some paramilitary as well. Not just the army. Like, the army is not just responsible for the insecurity in the country. Like, I've worked with paramilitaries and I have seen a situation whereby Police were called that they were robbers, that some robbers were robbing people on the highway. And they received a call not to disturb those robbers. Are you serious? Honestly. Jesus Christ, I find this hard to believe. That's why I said it's deeper than what um, people see or people think. If you're not in it, it's, I just feel like insecurity for now is not going anywhere and sorry to say it might be getting worse because nobody is doing anything about it kidnappers they are being paid ransom and brothers even if they get caught they'll, they'll be released the system not just the system is corrupt the system is corrupt the system is just so corrupt Wow, this is really crazy. So, tell us about your experience with the Chibok girls. I'll, I'll say it's a nightmare because we lost some good people, some good soldiers. When we went to rescue those Chibok girls, this particular place was Dambua. So we went there and already they knew we were coming. 
So some of them dashed, they ran away. And the ones that we met, we exchanged fire with them. At some point, they tried using the women as cover. As shield. As shield, because they know we will not engage. Though we none of the women, none of the women were killed, but the Boko Harams that we killed. Surprisingly, these women were obsessed with us. The Chibok girls. The Chibok girls, the ones we met, they were 21 in numbers. They were crying because we killed their husbands. Because they are some of them have kids already. Oh. Some of them, they are just all of them are married to the Boko Haram there. Stockholm syndrome. So they were upset. They were not ready to leave that bush. They were fighting us for killing their husbands. Even when we tried forcing them inside our helos to bring them back to town, they refused. We had to apply force to bring them back. So the Chibok girls were not even interested to be rescued? They were not. They were not. It seems they were really comfortable with this. They were okay there because... They had they, fallen in love with the bandits. I just don't understand the reason why, but we were all surprised because we came to rescue you people. But they were fighting us because we've killed their husbands. Wow, this is this is crazy. The army, the army soldiers are doing a lot, but people only get to see the the negative side on social media. But when it comes to Boko Haram bandits and the rest, we've lost so many soldiers the um, civil population don't get to feel what we're, what we're, what we're feeling. The trauma. The trauma and everything. The, everything, just the things you have understand. to lose. Yeah. Because for every soldier that has been in Operation Lafayette Adole in Bono State, once you leave that bush, you, you will never be the same. At some point, you will become something you never thought you would be. Probably a monster. Because you have to do some setting things to survive. It's either you kill or get killed. As long as you're posted to Bruno States, that's just the only option you have. So you have to pull the trigger at all times? You just have to pull the trigger. At what age did you join the Nigerian army? I was barely... Though the age to join the army is 18, but I was barely 17 when I joined the army because it was easier for me because I came from... Um, a military background. My dad is also a soldier. My uncle is a soldier. I have cousins and my elder brother is also a soldier. So it was easier for me because all my life it has always been about the military. It's the only thing I know. So at the point you got involved in military combat, were you disappointed to realize that the structure is corrupt? Very disappointed. You didn't know that before now? I grew up in the barracks, but I never knew... It was deeper it than... It was deeper than what I was seeing until I got into the system and I realized that it's just too much. Hmm. It's just too much. I never thought that... I was in secondary school when Boko Haram started their their struggle, I never thought that it would last to the point that I would come and join that fight. Wish I did. And till date, Boko Haram is still existing. Do you think that fight is ever going to end? I don't know. But I don't think it's going to end anytime soon because a lot of people are benefiting from it. Hmm. A lot of people are benefiting from it. There was someone I interviewed. What do you mean by a lot of people are benefiting from it? Do you want to say something about that? Whenever the, gov the government um, brings money for certain things, those things are not done. The money doesn't get to the right places and the right people, especially for weapons, ammunition, feeding. Certain people benefit from it. Hmm. And also, when some soldiers die in the bush, the families are not aware that the government are supposed to pay them. 
Oh, so they are supposed to pay the family. Yeah. And some of these families don't get any payment. They don't get any payment. Like how much is it? Is it supposed I don't, to? I don't know. You don't but, know. But they are entitled they are to. They're entitled. Wow. Even if you've served just one day in the army and you died in. Your family is entitled to a certain amount of yes. money. But some, 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 a lot of people are not aware. So that money is being paid. Yeah. But someone is benefiting. But someone is benefiting from it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So for some people, the whole book or thing is a means of income to them. And they'll do anything not to stop that income from coming. Because they are making so they much money. They are making money. so much money from it. That's crazy. Somebody I interviewed said that um, he was adopted by Boko Haram and he noticed that Red Cross, Nigerian Red Cross and some NGOs were involved. They were even supporting these Boko Haram people. They will bring them um, um, supplies. So I don't know if that statement is true or false. It's very true. Are they, you we've sure? We've known about uh, certain NGOs that they will come to our camp, collect information, go to Boko Haram camp, and give them details. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, at some point, we had to stop N NGOs from coming to the camp. Till date, NGOs don't go to certain places where soldiers are in that Buenos States. They were leaking information. They were leaking information, the numbers of soldiers, the kind of weapons, ev everything they see, they get to report back to Boko Haram. Wow, that's crazy. So it's... What, what that person said, he's right. It's true. Hmm. And it's possible these NGOs are making so much money too. Yeah. From this insurgency. They are making money from it too. That's why I said a lot of people are benefiting from it. A lot of people. Wait, why are these NGOs supporting this um, bandit, this book? Um, because people? it's a means of income to them. And they give them supplies. Yes. Do there they are people that, that are also contributes to these NGOs because so many people have lost their homes. So many people in Buenos State don't have a home right now. So, so many people would donate to these NGOs thinking they are helping these people, but the NGOs are helping themselves. Mm. But they still have some NGOs with good intentions. Yeah. But most of them are corrupt. Very corrupt. I've heard about, I've most watched some them documentaries. I also hear uh, that there are some human rights organizations that yes. think that these um, bandits and kidnappers, these Boko Haram people, should not be attacked. True. You understand that they should be arrested and not um, executed. True. Is that, is, that, is that statement true? Very true. Some human rights, they don't value the lives of soldiers, but they value the lives of these insurgents, Boko Haram. Boko Haram, uh, to them, Boko Haram can kill soldiers, but soldiers cannot just kill Boko Haram. Hmm. That, that is the reason why um, a certain human rights, they, they sued the army because they felt like the army was killing Boko Haram unjustly. They've sued the, the army entirely, the chief of army, army staff. Like, they just feel like soldiers are supposed to not harm these terrorists. We should arrest them and they should follow the proper channel, which they don't. Because we've seen cases where you arrest somebody and the person will come back in a week later with a fresh attack. Mm. And most of the time, we don't go to their camp. They come to our camp. They wow. come to our camp. They launch the attack most of the times. Leaving your family behind, you will get to bond with different people, different, your colleagues, you will bond and have this brotherhood, this, or well, at the end of the day, you might just lose somebody you're talking Hi. to in the next five minutes. The feeling of going to the, going to the war front and then returning alone, True. you're not returning with your brothers. Most times, if we are, if we're not experiencing an attack, we're in the camp, like, those that, are, that, that will be on duty will be on duty. Then the rest of us will be playing card, Ludo. Then the next 10 minutes, there will be an attack. And after the attack, we just realize the person you were playing with is dead. Try. And sometimes the trauma that comes with it is 
seeing a friend of yours that was shot, but he's not dead yet, then he's calling you for help. You can't go to him because you, you will get shot too. Then him dying, you, your conscience, your conscience will fight you like you were supposed to go help him. But deep down, you know, once you leave your cover, you will get shot because Boko Haram, they, they, they are trained. They have snipers as well. Mm -hmm. So once you leave your trench, that's, that's, you're, you're done for. Most Nigerians feel like soldiers are just heartless and they don't relate well with civilians, but it's not true. With the, with the level of commitment that, I'm not saying this because I'm a soldier, I'm saying this because I have seen the passion, the commitment from a lot of soldiers. Like, we just want this country to be better, peaceful. But it's deeper than us and it's bigger than us. We just, we're only doing the best we can. Hmm. So just uh, checkpoints, um, VIP escorts, chasing kidnappers, chasing armed robbers, bandits, Boko Haram, everywhere. Even, even on top of water, you will see Nigerian army there. We're everywhere, just trying to make sure that there is peace but and there's security and the there's security in the country but it's Charles. just a lot of soldiers a lot of soldiers have lost their life fighting for peace those of you watching this video if you see soldiers anywhere please salute them encourage them show them some love because after listening to this story you have a very deep insight of what people who wear those camouflages go through every day to maintain peace and order in the society that we are living in. I also um, want to applaud the wives of soldiers because in every barrack right now, we have more widows Try. than those that their husbands are still alive. What are some things you've done to survive? At the point I got lost in the bush, after an attack, the attack was so bloody that we had to withdraw. And in the course of withdrawing, we went different ways. We just scattered. And I found myself in the bush alone with just 16 rounds. And at some point I had to keep one round for myself that I would rather end it than allow them to catch me alive. So I had 15 rounds in the chamber, in my magazine, then one round in my pocket. That if worse comes to worse, I'll end it because it will be more brutal if they capture me alive. So I was in the bush for three days, searching for a way out. And because of thirst, I had to drink my pee. I drank my urine because of thirst. And I got to a point I had no urine in me anymore. I could not pee anything. No food, no water. And God so kind, there is no food, no water, nothing. And I passed out the third day. I had no idea where I was. I just passed out. And when I woke up, I was in the headquarter and I was told a full animal brought me. If like he brought me, I was on top of his camel. He carried my weapon and brought me back to our headquarter. Mm. I don't know how he looks like. I didn't see him, but the full animal man saved my life. Yeah, wow. He had, I was vulnerable. He could, he could have taken my weapon or killed me instantly. But he saved my life, the full animal man that I've never seen before till date. I don't know how it looks like, but he saved my life and I'll, I'll be for, I'll, I'm forever grateful because for a sec, for, for a day, I will never in my life, because we look at it like Fulanese in the bush, they walk with Boko Haram. Yeah. So I will never for a day expect a Fulani man to save me, but God so kindly did. Hmm. I can't imagine all you've been through, bro. Like. You know, the day you signed up to become a soldier, your life never remained the same. Nope. I never thought that I 
90% of soldiers did not join this job to fight for, their, for the country. 90% are just looking for a job. Oh, they are just looking for a job. Yes. Not that they are passionate that, about not, no. their motherland. They're not. But in the course of that, you find yourself being passionate. You find yourself doing it because you want, you just want everybody to be okay. You just want the country to be peaceful. A lot of us join the job because we just need something to, we just need an income, a source of income mm -hmm. to put food on the table. Because no sane person will choose to do this job because they love this job. There is nothing to love about dying. Mm. We know if a building is on fire and you will see somebody giving an order to soldiers to go in and you can't question that order. Where fighting is heavy, that is where they push us to and we have to do it. That is how bad it is. We have to do it or else some innocent people will die. Mm. So most of the time, we, we lay down our lives for these people without them knowing. Most of the time, 90% of whenever a soldier is killed, somebody elsewhere was saved. Mm. But people don't get to see that part. They only get to see the part of where soldiers... I'm not going to deny the fact that soldiers don't molest civilians. Harass civilians, harass civilians. Intimidate them. Intimidate them. I am not denying that part. But that is not the only thing about the military. Hmm. We have some good parts. We have some good in us. We've done, we've laid down our lives. We've sacrificed everything. And for those of us that have been in that bush, our life will, will, st will still, will, will forever experience PTSD. Do they give you guys mental support? No. No access for, um, is it rehab or something? No. They, feel, they just feel like you're a soldier, you're good to go. Wow. For like six months, if I'm walking by a field and I hear the sound of whistle, I'll be scared. I'll feel like, yes, something is about to happen because in the bush, whenever I hear the whistle, it's for red alert, they are coming. So for like six months straight, whistle was messing with me. Mm. And if I hear a sound of certain sounds, Maybe like thunder, I will feel like they've launched an RPG, and I will be ready, even without holding a weapon, because I'll be feeling like I'm still in the bush. And a lot of soldiers are going through through that same PTSD, PTSD, the trauma, and some they've lost their family because of it, because some of them cannot handle it around their family. Mm. Some will resort to drinking and. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard. Some don't get to sleep well because it's always nightmare. Nightmares. Seeing friends that you've lost, it's, it's so difficult for a lot of soldiers. Hmm. Wow, the people who kidnap and the Boko Haram, are they the same thing? The we believe that, bandits. we believe that you know, most of the times, Boko, um, Boko Haram, they have this disagreement within themselves. They get to break up. Why some will go to another state and form a different thing. Those ones we call bandits. They will leave Bruno states, go to other states like Zamfara, Kaduna, Bauchi, and all those northern area, and start kidnapping people for money. Mm. Boko Haram, they don't kidnap for money. They don't, they don't call for ransom. But bandits, once you break from that group, you're no longer funded. You need to create your own funds. Your own funds. So they go, to, they just dive into kidnapping. Kidnapping. Collect ransoms. And the way it's going, we think that some of these bandits are now being funded. Some of them are now being funded because you can, you can as, a, as a Nigerian, you can commit a crime. It will be very easy to track you. But it's difficult to track a bandit. Tracking of bandit is not the job of the military. Tracking of people is not the job of the military. Whose job is that? They know. They know they know themselves. They know it's their job. And they don't do it because I guess it's 
bigger than them too. Mm. It's that is the reason why currently you see bandits coming on TikTok on do live give video away. do give away, flaunting their weapons and nothing, nothing will happen to them. But as a regular citizen, just come online and say something off. You'll be tracked and arrested. Like there was a guy who named his dog Buari. Yes, he was arrested. He was arrested all the way from Anambra State, right? Yes. Even there was a northern guy that said something about Buari's wife, that she's getting fat. She's enjoying Nigerian's money. She was he was arrested that same day. That same day. That same day. So for Boko Haram to um, from bandits to come on live video, be doing giveaway, flaunting their weapon, flaunting cash insulting the president and still nothing happens that means the system is messed up hmm crazy that's just the height of it it's a slap to the country the system is just corrupt wow in fact i don't even know what to say we've, we've said a lot and this is really overwhelming i wasn't even expecting such i know that there are so many other things you want to talk about but they are just too sensitive too sensitive that you can't even begin to talk about them like there was something you told me behind the scenes and I don't even want to talk about it yeah. here because I spoke to my lawyer and he advised us not to talk about it yeah. here. If we were to talk about it, Jesus Christ, I am not sure some of you watching this video will be comfortable anymore. So it's best not to even bring it up. Wow, this is really crazy. And we, we, we have a lot of corrupt people in this country. A lot. Because we've had names, we've had requests from certain people not to touch certain people. Mm. And you would just be wondering why. But you can't do anything about it. Because as discipline is like the discipline is the bedrock of the military, you have to obey any other. So you don't get to question why you have to release this person. We don't prosecute, we only hand over to police. But we know the outcome. Once we hand over our suspects to police, we know the outcome. Just be, just, just be ready to see that person again. That is why most of the time we don't, we prefer ending them and than handing, handing them, them over, over to police. Because you ending them will save a lot of lives. So it's looking as if police is the most corrupt security agencies in Nigeria. There are good policemen, but I'll say there are a lot of corrupt men in the Some in the of them are only force. following instructions too. Yeah. And it's possible some of the instructions are not even coming within the police force. It's coming from outside. Exactly. And there are lots of security agencies in Nigeria. A lot. That nobody really talk about day to day. We only talk about the Nigerian military, the yes. Nigerian police, Nigerian military, Nigerian most, police. Most of the blames are being pushed to the army. Most of the blames of insecurity have been put. I mean, soldiers cannot be everywhere. Soldiers cannot be everywhere. If you go to the barrack, you will hardly see up to 50 soldiers in some barracks mm. because soldiers are outside. They're outside. They're at every junction. Every junction. They're on the streets. So They're even doing the job of police. Police, civil defense, everything. So, I mean, I mean, we're just everywhere. Uh, we need to celebrate the Nigerian army enough, you know. Why there are some bad eggs there? We have a lot of good people. Good people who are willing to sacrifice their lives daily for those people. You know, there's this song Chike sang. It's called Soldier, Soldier, Soldier. I've heard about. You've, you've heard the yes, song. Heard you know, it. there are a lot of people who have actually dedicated songs about the Nigerian. Um, Nigerian army and um, these are just some of the people who think that soldiers should be appreciated. Maybe they've lost someone or maybe they've had personal experiences. We never can tell but with this video it should be enough to sensitize people about some of the challenges that the Nigerian military face True. and some of the sacrifices that they have to make daily to protect this society. I really don't know what to say. I just hope that God is going to send a Moses to come and help us and rescue us because this is not just about civilians yeah. that are worried about insecurity. Even the Nigerian army too are also worried about insecurity. Like he said, 
sometimes he could be eating and playing games with his colleagues and the next minute that person is gone there's an ambush do you understand so the the idea of worrying about security is not just for civilians alone it's for everyone so nobody really knows how long we'll continue to bear this who is going to save us who is going to be that leader that will come and bring change make a difference we're still waiting we are still waiting we are still hoping so my people that is it i hope you guys had everything that he said here it is quite unfortunate that most of us do not really respect nigeria military because of the narrative or the impression these bad eggs among them you know have showed us because we have seen their antecedent is in when nigerians are protesting you see soldiers shooting them doing all manners of evil things against nigerians so those bad eggs have already shown us that they are not there to defend us like they are not there to defend nigerians that's why when we had or see nigeria soldier you know lost his life we don't really feel that pain that oh nigeria soldier has lost his life because of the impression you know they have given us that they are not there for us but listening to this particular man here kind of changed my mindset that okay we still have some soldiers that have this passion to defend our country so my people it is quite unfortunate of what is happening in nigeria especially when it comes to insecurity so my people that is it as i make i bring this update to you guys i hope you truly enjoy watching please if today is your first time here don't forget to subscribe like this video share it to your friends and family so that they will get an opportunity to watch as well thank you everyone that be sharing my video i truly appreciate you all as well as my members i really appreciate your support as well thank you so much for your support so my people i will see you guys in my next update goodbye for now